five words for you. DM Scotty's new purple worm design. I want to have a different design than my original purple worm. Why rehash something I've already done? I'm also using a new crafting material. And this is a material you can actually make and craft yourself. I have a video for making that super secret special material we're going to use to craft the worm. Make sure you check out my original purple worm video if you want to see a more classic kind of old school design of the purple worm. Yuck! Gross! If you're going to make something like this, it's kind of a nice idea to sketch it out to uh, get a solid idea of where you're going with it. And you can see a couple of the important details. I put the crawl legs on there that weren't on there before. I also had that kind of chest detail. And I also did the mouth very differently. Now this isn't how I ended up doing the mouth, but it was kind of the start of the idea and the idea that I wanted a lot of teeth in the mouth. All right, craft friends, let's make this worm, all right? I'm going to use some high gauge wire and that's gonna be the core of the worm. So I'll just measure about a foot of that out and then uh, cut it with some wire snips. So I'm just gonna grab a big hunk of aluminum foil and this will be the body of the worm. I'm gonna wrap it around the wire and you see kind of I get it like a sausage shape or you know, whatever you wanna, <laughs> other shape you wanna say it looks like. But yeah, <laughs> basically a cylinder. And this will save me a lot of clay when I make it with the clay. So here we go, you can see I've got the piece and uh, it's ready to shape. Now I don't want it sticking straight up in the air, right? That would be really weird. <laughs> so I'm gonna bend it into kind of a, a shape where you know I can imagine it bursting out of the ground and menacing players. So I'll bend it into a nice kind of wormy shape here. I twist it a little bit. So it's not just bent over, but kind of cockeyed a little bit, right? So we want it to make like uh, you know, an organic animal, not a robot type thing. So there, that's perfect. And that'll save us a lot of clay uh, when we do this. I'm going to use a pasta machine with this project. And this is a great thing to have if you're going to use a lot of clay for sculpting. It's not too expensive and it's great for polymer clay. It's great for porcelain clay. You know, any really any kind of clay that you want to flatten into sheets. I like to use it with a polymer clay to kind of knead it because polymer clay can be really hard to knead. All right, so here's my cold porcelain. Make sure you check out my video and know how to make this. This stuff has some great properties. I really love it. And it's gonna make the project super hard. This stuff is really strong and hard. So I'll just knead it up and get it ready. And you wanna keep this stuff always covered because it can dry out. So unlike polymer clay, it can dry out. All right, I'm gonna get in a wad here and then I'm gonna start cranking it through the pasta machine. And what the machine will do, it'll this is gonna flatten it out. And you'll see the reason I wanna do this here in a sec. La 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 la, here is some pasta. Ah, no, don't eat this. <laughs> here I have a sheet of the stuff and it's ready to go on my worm. I'm gonna take my worm armature and start wrapping it around. Almost like a blanket. Good night, little wormy. Just wrapping smooth, wrapping smooth till you get the whole worm covered up. Take little pieces if you need to touch up. You know, there was a piece ripped there. It wasn't totally covered by the clay, so I just took another little piece sheet there and covered that hole and just work it till you get a smooth surface. I've got a strip here that I ran through the uh, pasta machine. I'm going to put it on front. I want to build up the front a little bit because I'm going to do some detail like with the segments of the body and I wanted to have enough clay for that to work. So I'm going to build up that front a little bit more than the rest of the body. 
Just blend that into the body and you'll be good to go for the next segment. Ah, get see what I did there? Segment. <laughs> All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this, just, this is just a cheap sculpting tool. I'm going to kind of divide it. Imagining that this is kind of the center of the underbelly of the worm. I'm going to use the curve part of the tool and just pull out from that center. This is just super easy. No real complicated sculpting or anything here. And then I'll just mirror it to the other side. You can see why we added that extra clay to the front. You can see this is looking pretty gross actually. <laughs> it looks like a giant maggot or something. And it's just as easy as that. I've got some uh, nice segmenting on the underbelly there. I'll just take my tool and define it a little better. So I'm just kind of hitting the corners and that accentuates the segmentation. Now what I want to do also is to do um, arm holes where there's going to be little, like little crawler legs that are coming out of this thing. I thought it'd be a nice thing to do uh, to differentiate it from my other purple worm. I figured it'd be cool to have kind of crawler legs coming out the edge, the sides there. And I'll just mirror it on the other side. And so I'm going to do the sockets where those crawler legs are going to be. Kind of pulling up the edge there. I grabbed a scrap piece of cardboard for the base while this dries and uh, the core is plenty strong to uh, hold to the hot glue. This stuff's hardened a little over a day and it's really nice. I'll just trim that excess wire off there. Now what I'm going to do is I decided I want to make it different from the other purple worm, kind of have like a flower petal mouth and you'll see what I'm talking about here soon. So uh, I'll just kind of do that into like a leaf shape kind of thing. And I'm going to do three of these on the purple worm itself. So it should give it an interesting look that uh, is different from the other one I have. I really want to be do something different. I mean, if you're going to make a project like this, why not, uh, you know, uh, take a chance with it or, you know, do something that's that's different from what you've already done. Just don't, you know, don't keep doing the same thing. Always experiment. Always uh, stretch your creativity. So here's all the petals I'm going to use for the mouth. That'll be kind of the top mouth there, the bigger one. Mouth segment. And I'm just going to hot glue this on. And I'm just using, you know, the aluminum foil. Because it'll be my armature. There's no wire inside this. Careful, the aluminum foil will actually heat up <laughs> when you put hot glue on it. get it in the right position. I want it open enough because I want to show all these teeth inside the mouth. So I don't want it too closed. I want easy access to the inside of the mouth. It kind of looks like flower petals opening right now, but uh, when we get this thing done, it's going to be vicious looking. All right, I got all that set. I'll just reinforce it with some hot glue so it doesn't bend up, fall off. Hey guys, I'm going to interrupt the video for just one second. Uh, I had a problem when I was shooting this. I had some lost footage and I've had to work around that. So you're going to know, might notice some weird quirks when you're watching it. One is going to be coming up. It is where I did the uh, mouth pieces and I'm going to start working on the back plates and suddenly the mouth pieces are no longer there because I was working on several worms at once. So that's the problem. And when we move on to the mouth uh, or doing the back the back part, the scales on the back, I uh, do more detail on the scales, but you'll notice that the mouth is kind of filled in. So I've already done that. I've lost that footage. So I'm going to kind of show you what I did for the mouth, but I, I do have the rest of all, all the rest of the footage. That's just what I'm missing. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, before we move on. I've let the worm harden up for a day, and just like before when I did the belly, I'm adding a sheet of the cold porcelain to the back. Now I'm not going to blend it into the worm because I want this to be the back carapace of the worm. Very similar to what I did you know, last time when I did the first worm. I'm also going to coil up some clay and uh, put it in the center 
and this will be the crest of the back, the crest of the back plates, and I'll just kind of squeeze them uh, into the rest of the clay and uh, blend it in. Now comes the detail for the plates. I kind of want to have the different segments of the plates that are interlocking and uh, kind of sweep back. So I'll just push into the clay and start creating these. You can see I'm using the simplest of sculpting tools. This doesn't really require anything that's that uh, fancy or complex. And uh, yeah, just dig into the clay and you get those uh, plate, define those plates. Just kind of like what I did for the segments on the front. Once I get those segments defined, what I'm going to do is push kind of under the clay there for each segment and make sure that it's defined, that it looks like it's uh, you know overlapping the other segment, the other uh, carapace segment. Using my simple tools again, I'm just kind of defining the back segments more. I'm doing that uh, middle crest. I uh, put some uh, kind of lines into the uh, carapace give, to give it a little bit of interest to uh, you know add something almost like a running stripe or something going up uh, the carapace. I thought that'd be kind of a fun detail. So, um, but yeah, still again, I'm just using these simple sculpting tools and nothing that's that hard. As I mentioned, I lost some footage. So let's uh, draw here what I did with the mouth. So on the inside of the mouth, I sculpted this kind of pucker-like protrusion for the gullet, had folds of skin coming out from the center. And then I had to do the petal-like protrusions. So I'll just draw those on here to show you what I did. So those are connected to that center gullet there. And then I did segments within those. So just kind of like I did the back scales actually. And then I just poked holes in the clay that are going to be for the teeth. And I'm going to have a lot of teeth <laughs> in this thing. So uh, that's one thing, uh, one difference I wanted to do in the sculpt. I wanted to have a lot of teeth in the mouth. So this is what you see inside the mouth. You'll uh, get glances of this, uh, what I did. But unfortunately, I lost the footage. <sighs> So at this point, I've let the worm dry, and that's so I don't mess up any of the work that I've previously done. That's what's nice about this air dry stuff. Now I'm just flattening out a piece of clay that I'm going to use over the flaps of the mouth. And as I talked about uh, earlier that, uh, you know, I already did the inside of the mouth. I lost that footage. So the whole goal of this, the point that I'm at now, is to make it look like the carapace on the back. So I'm going to do kind of the crest on the top and the scale segmentations and that kind of stuff. Segmentations and that kind of stuff. So I'm just doing the same techniques I did on the back and uh, it's just super easy. I'm just using these really cheap tools. These are just some Sculpey plastic tools. So yeah, I like to keep it inexpensive and that's what I'm doing. So just add some details to this till it blends in. You want to really make it look like the back segmentations on this thing. Now right here you can really get a good look at what I was talking about about the inside of the mouth. Just the same techniques I did on the back and uh, I'm going to do the side um, flaps the same way too, you know, make them look like that carapace. So just a similar type of technique. When I created the mouth I poked holes for the teeth and you see there's going to be a lot of teeth in this mouth so vicious, <laughs> vicious looking. But as the clay dries, the holes will kind of close up a little bit. So to expand the holes, I'm just going to use this hand drill and uh, kind of open those holes up a little bit so that the teeth are easier uh, to insert. This is going to be an interesting technique. I'm going to use this modeling paste and I'm going to apply it to the model. And the reason I'm using the modeling paste and not I didn't sculpt all this in to begin with was because, well, one, you have a limited time to sculpt this stuff. And two, it's, uh, this stuff doesn't hold detail uh, spectacularly well. Um, it will, you know, you can sculpt some detail in it, but it, it's hard to get like little minute details. And I thought that I could use the modeling paste and drag it out and get those folds of the skin that look really nice and just super easy. I'm also going to work it around where the... Uh, little uh, crawler legs are going to pop out. So it looked like folds of skin around 
uh, that area where the uh, legs pop out. If you've never used this stuff before, it's great. I use it all the time on models uh, for details like this. And it dries hard, um, but a little bit flexible. Uh, it paints well because it's actually for paintings. Uh, you put it on paintings to add texture to paintings, and it works great. And look how nice that is. Now I need to make the uh, scores of teeth that I need for this beastie because there are a lot of teeth holes in his mouth, and I need teeth. So I'm just rolling the clay between my fingers, getting it to a point, making uh, some of them different sizes, but roughly the same shape and size. I'm just going to do a ton of these uh, for the teeth. Now one nice um, attribute of the cold porcelain is it's, it's kind of um, translucent. Not totally translucent, but it gives a nice translucency that looks like teeth or bone, actually. So I really like the effect that that gives. Another thing I'm going to do is make the little crawler leg. So it's just kind of a almost a tube with a claw on the end. And the great thing about this cold porcelain is it's really tough. If you were doing with this with Sculpey, it would and you'd knock this over, the claws and everything would break off, no question. Even if you had a wire in them, they would break off. But the cold porcelain, you could actually drop it or knock it over, and the claws may not break. They probably wouldn't break because this stuff is so super hard. That's one great, another great quality uh, to this cold porcelain. So I just need to make enough of these crawler legs that uh, will run up the, body, the length of the body. And this is re uh, really going to make it look different from my other purple worm. First order of business is to glue those crawler legs in, and I'm using my E6000, a great glue for uh, if you want something to stay put. Here it is with all the uh, crawler legs glued on, and I'll just let that dry. Now I want some weight for the bottom of the worm because I'm going to put it on a base and I want it to stand up and not fall over. So I'm using these washers as weight on the bottom of the worm. I'm just going to add some E6000 to these and glue them all together. Just going to rip my worm from its temporary cardboard base. After the washers all dry, I'm going to glue them to the base of the worm with my E6000. You can see those have some good weight. The uh, worm is actually just standing up on those washers after it dries, of course. I love these little crawler legs. They really make the thing look creepy and it's a nice difference from my other purple worm. I really love the mouth too. It's a really big divergence from what I did the first time with the purple worm and the more classic design. Okay, I've got my supplies here. I've got some cold porcelain, some other tools, some a uh, couple of plastic tools, and a brush. I'm going to use the texture of the base and a few stones there. So you can see here that I've glued the thing onto another plastic base, a wider base. You could use anything really, any, any kind of disc you have. It wouldn't have to be an actual plastic base. But I had it, so I used it. I'll just wrap that clay around the base, around the worm like a donut. Mmm, donuts. <laughs> worm donuts don't sound so good, though. So uh, I'm going to kind of match it up with the edge of the base so it doesn't go over the edge. I don't want to hang it over the edge. And I'm just kind of getting a rough mound, right? It's it's the mound, it's the earth that the worm is popping out of the ground, right? And I'll just start texturing it with the brush. Just push into the clay and it'll make it look like dirt. Just a super easy technique, sculptor's technique. And you really want a stiff brush for this. Now I'm going to do some kind of cracks in the ground, like uh, the ground is almost shattering kind of effect is what I'm going for. And just really easy with that plastic tool. Just kind of doing branching cracks, radiating out from the, the hole where the worm is coming out of. I'm just going to enhance those with this little pointed plastic tool here. Looking good, looking good. And I'll just uh, kind of push some of these stones in the in the clay. So here it is all finished, and I'll just enhance some areas where the cracks are. And we'll just let this dry overnight, and we'll be good. 
My white porcelain is all hardened and I'm going to use this Elmer's glue all to add sand to the base. I really like to use the sand that has mixed aggregate which means it's not just play sand it has small pebbles and that kind of thing and it really gives a nice appearance of a varied you know earth texture. So I'm just going to add some uh, Elmer's glue to the base just pour the sand over it and get a really nice earth texture on there. Once that dries I am ready to paint this beastie so uh, we're moving into the final stages. So you can see I've spray painted this uh, flat black. It's uh, nice because it'll take the paint easier. And I'm going to start out with a very dark purple. This will be kind of my base coat for this beastie. You notice I'm not painting the hard carapace uh, the same color. I'm going to paint it a different color. I painted the interior of the mouth with a nice cherry red. I can't wait till we get all those teeth in there. I'm going to give the base a nice coat of dark brown and that'll be to start. Now I'm going to use a lighter shade of purple and uh, dry brush some areas. In particular the folds of skin and the uh, segmentations on the front belly. And I'm just kind of dry brushing these areas. If you're not familiar with that, it's putting a little bit of paint on the brush and then dragging it over the surface to pick out the details. You can see as you apply this lighter coat, all those uh, little details you sculpted in start to pop out. I wanted to do something interesting for the carapace. So what I'm doing is I'm using this plaid color shifting purple. And you can see how the color shifts when I put it on the uh, model itself. So I'm going to paint the carapace with this interesting color. In the next step I hit the uh, worm with a dark wash, right? And so what I'm doing here is kind of building layers of color and darkness and shade, right? I decided to use this berry color for the inside of the mouth. The next step I decided to do was put the teeth in and it's a bit tricky. I have to glue each tooth individually into the cavity that I made in the mouth. You know, you can easily bump another tooth and get it out of place. So you've got to, you know, continually adjust and everything. So it's a bit tricky getting your hands in there, but the end result is going to be so fantastic. And I love that the uh, tooth look like bone. You know, they look like real teeth with this cold porcelain. I love it. And you can see here, you know, when we've got the teeth in, how fantastic that really looks. I decided when I got all the tooth in and they were dry that I was going to use a little bit of brown ink and I'll paint the base of the teeth and that'll give them kind of a weathered look and I like to paint near where they go into the gum of the mouth so it's kind of like you know worn more on the ends and browned near the gum and I think it's a nice effect it's a really nice effect it's really easy to do just have a gentle hand you know and get around the base of each tooth but I think the uh, you know the maw with these teeth in it is just fantastic. I love this effect. I love the look, and uh, it's definitely very different from my first pur purple worm. You know how you'll do something and it's not quite how you expected. Well, the carapace was not quite how I wanted it with the uh, color changing paint, so I decided to go to a bone white and I'm going to dry brush that on there. But you don't lose that work that you did earlier because you've got those layers of color in there and they kind of shine through, you know, come through the cracks and crevices of this carapace. So it's not wasted work. You're just kind of building on the previous work. Never think of it as just wasting your work. Think of it as, you know, building layers of color and uh, interest, right? Since this is a purple worm, I wasn't really happy with the bone look, right? I want this to be a purple worm. <laughs> So what I did is use some ink and uh, give it a nice wash on that bone color and you still get the lightness of the bone and it's kind of coming through but you also get that nice uh, kind of color wash on there that gives it that tint of the purple color which I think really works for the purple worm. I also did a bit more uh, light purple dry brushing on the belly to kind of bring it out when I did the wash. Uh, it made everything very dark so I gave it another layer of dry brushing to uh, bring out those details. Another aspect I thought might be fun that I didn't do on my first purple worm was kind of slobber uh, hanging down, right? And of course I turned my glue gun to do that. So I'm going to use parchment paper and drag it over the surface um, and get little uh, strips of uh, clear, you know, the clear glue 
and I can glue those to the inside of the mouth and it'll look like it's hanging down. So cool. So I could have stopped right there and been done, but I decided I want to add a couple more things because one of the challenges of being an artist is knowing when to stop. You know, how far should you go to add more and then, you know, when you get to that point, stop. But I felt that it was missing a few things and one of the things was I wanted more earth on the worm. So I decided to use my texture paste and uh, kind of scoop it on the worm there in various spots, especially on top near the where the head is because that would seem to hold the most dirt as it bursts through the ground as opposed to the body that's vertical and would fall off. So I put clumps of texture paste on there and then literally just stuck uh, my irregular sand, which is just sand with different aggregate in it, into the texture paste. And that was a nice way to get the sand uh, to stick as opposed to like glue where it might just keep falling off, right? I'm going to use these uh, mud pastes and they're really cool because they have actual grit in them. So it's not just a color, it's a uh, texture too. After the sand embedded texture paste dried, I painted it the same color as the base and then added those different mud colors to uh, get a nice effect. And you can see how nice that looks on there. I'm really glad I went this extra step. And finally, down to the last thing, right? I wanted to make the inside of the mouth look glossy as well as the slobber strands. So I used this uh, plaid gloss and it's water-based, which is nice because it's just easy cleanup. And I painted the inside of the mouth, the teeth, the slobber, and wow, we have a fantastic look here. I love how what this looks like. You travel along the desolate plain, and suddenly, the ground shakes, and suddenly subsides. Everything is okay. But then, it shakes again. Nearer this time, rocks and earth fly into the air, flailing past you, and suddenly you see it. The worm bursts forth, an enormous monstrosity. Swing, and then suddenly it lunges forward. What? No, no, no. What is that? Scotty, I liked this character. Yeah, I think I can kill anything at this point. What is that? I'm gonna need a new character sheet. Nope. Nope. Grab my note dice. Grab my note character sheet. My notebook. Nope. Oh my god, what is that? Ah!